Christmas parade. Uh, that as well has been posted on the website. Um, I know that people may be disappointed, but of course, out of an abundance of caution, um, it was felt that that was the best thing to do at this time. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to make note of uh, a few holiday closures for the city of Lewis, the uh, city hall. We will be closed Tuesday, November 3rd for election day. Uh, Wednesday, November 11th for Veterans Day and Thursday, November 26th for Thanksgiving and the day following Friday, the 27th. So those are my announcements. Um, any questions? Anything? Okay, so we can move into the agenda. Uh, we have the first item of business is the presentation and possible action on the July 27th, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Um, did everyone have an opportunity to review those? Yes. Okay. Are there any comments, corrections, additions, revisions? I move to approve. Okay. Second. Okay. Thank you, Harry. So that motion, uh, Harry seconded. So moving to item number two, we have the meeting minutes from September 21st, 2020. And has everyone had an opportunity to review those meeting minutes? And are there any comments, questions, revisions? Nothing. Is there a motion to accept the meeting minutes for September 21st? So moved. Thank you, Warren. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Marty. Okay. So we will move on to the commissioner's reports. I think Candace is trying to get in here. So we have, um, Harry, would you like to start with George Smith Park? Any updates there from? Sure, I'd be happy to, but I also need to note that I have not heard from Lorna, so I can only speak for myself. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Uh, the, the park continues to be maintained by our landscapers. Uh, it also is being serviced by Todd Frickman, of, uh, and so they are still continuing to spray. Uh, they've done what I would consider a very good job of, of taking care of uh, the noxious weeds uh, to lower the, the need for a public health concern. Uh, outside of that, uh, it's, it's just that kind of roll up the, you know, pull the, pull the, pull the, the blankets up over your head and, and it's fall time. So we're, 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 that's it. Okay. Harry, um, I just have one, uh, one little question. I was out there doing tree tag maintenance where you have to really get up close and personal with the trees. There was a section along the um, pond, the outer portion of the pond, kind of near where the farmer's market is, except for a little further north of that, um, that still has a lot of poison ivy there to the point that I couldn't get into all those trees to check the tags. There's just too much. Now, I will say this, the overall poison ivy load is much lower than it used to be, but it's, it's not all gone, of course. All, all I can say is uh, if you and I can map it out, uh, we can let Todd know, and I can guarantee that it'll be taken care of. He's, I believe he's doing a very thorough job. They were starting on the frag mighty the last I saw. So I'm excellent. I'm... 
If, if I may, I was uh, in the park on Friday with Todd doing a walkthrough and um, he did note some areas that need some continued treatment. So he's, um, he's quite aware of, of what's going on in the park too. But um, Harry, if you and Marty can do that walkthrough, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Anything else uh, from George Smith Park? Maybe Lorna will, will come in. I did not hear from her. So um, we have Christine and Candace for Stango Park and the Stango Extension. Would you like to give your updates for? I'll, I'll defer to Christine. Okay. Oh. Not much this month. Um, just the ordering of two new replacement trees for the trailhead area um, that uh, hopefully will get planted in uh, three or four weeks. And um, and that's that's really it. Nothing else to report for Stango Park Extended. But I think that Candace might have an update on uh, the story walk in Stango Park. Um, I wasn't able to get together with Jen today, okay. so I don't have it. I do know that it's been widely used by families because it's a great social distancing opportunity outside in the park mm -hmm. for families. And it has always been a very popular uh, activity for the, especially the families that have been participants in the children's learning garden programs. So they, they're aware that the story time is there and then the library publicized it on its website and its Facebook page. So um, I feel fairly certain that they, while they don't have real numbers because there's nobody out there taking attendance, oh. uh, when, when they look out the window, they can see that people are making their way through the story with the children. Mm -hmm. okay. I've had the same experience when I've been out there looking at tree tags. I see families out there sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The park's being used. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. so. I think I think that was a great opportunity to get people out in the park, outdoors, being safe, but still doing educational experiences. And it was a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Great. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Marty, updates on the tree program. Yeah, I've been doing, uh, you know, more inspecting the trees and conducting tree tag maintenance, light pruning. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm prepping for, uh, for my budget submission. Um, one of our projects, the, the uh, residential portion of second street, looks like that's really going to happen soon. <laughs> the last mm -hmm. week of October, Bartlett's coming in and, uh, removing most of the small trees that are there because they're not doing well at all. Um, amending the planting holes and, uh, uh, putting in suitable replacement trees and, um, they're going to water them for a year. That's great. Um, so last week in October, that should be done. And uh, it hopefully it'll look really, really well. Um, um, for the um, next year, we're going to, we're going to try for another um, grant to do a planting project. And this year we're, uh, we're looking at doing the middle portion of West second street. It's the portion between Burton Avenue and uh, Ocean View. And there's a lot of uh, older trees there that are not doing well. Um, they're kind of crammed in between the sidewalk and the uh, um, and the curb. And uh, I think some of the selections were just not appropriate. We have we has I love sycamores. We have some sycamores there, but they're really getting too big for that little space. And we have some cherry trees that are too big for that space, and some other trees that are just plain failing. So. Um, going to look into removing the failing trees and replanting with more suitable species and we'll apply for a grant and if we get the grant that'll pay for um, uh, half the cost hopefully so great you have any other ideas to, for, that we should look at for a planning project I'd love to hear them or try to line them up a few years in advance <laughs> Marty I I may have misheard you that was West 4th Street correct Between West 4th, 4th Street the okay. middle the middle portion of West 4th Street. Between Burton and Ocean View. Okay. All right. Well, if anyone has ideas for the tree program, please uh, forward that information or thoughts to, to Marty. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, Marty, I have a question. Do you think you'd like to add some more trees to the trailhead area? Um, I'm open to suggestions. At one okay. point we thought that was enough trees, but I like trees, so. <laughs> Where were you thinking in particular? Uh, just um, maybe in the railroad track area, underneath the power lines, um, some shorter species we had okay. talked about. Yeah. Um, do you want to do that next year or? I, yeah. yeah, maybe if you wanted to bundle it along with. Uh, okay, let me work on the on this proposal. Um, huh? There's a, that section of Fourth Street has a lot of planting space. Oh, okay. It, so, it wasn't critical that we do it. Yeah. But if you want, but you know, maybe maybe I could maybe I could throw in a few trees in there. Well, let me let me see how how it goes. And okay. as I recall, under the power lines, we have to keep the trees pretty short. very short. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about what species sure. you think. Is, okay. uh, a lot of the short trees I know don't like the sun, so we'll have to think of uh, what goes well in hot dry. But yeah, let's talk about that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. There's a question in the chat regarding can a from Trina, can a tree be donated in honor of someone? <clears throat> excuse me, as a way to fund when a tree needs replacement. Yes, we have a we have a tree uh, program where people can donate and. Uh, the paperwork, I think, is online. It's on our website where you can donate a tree. You can even have a plaque put there if you like. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. That would be a wonderful idea. In fact, if you go to Canal Front Park, a lot of those trees have mm -hmm. plaques on them because they were donated by citizens. Harry, you're muted. <laughs> and we, we can also mention that uh, benches in the parks can uh, be donated, uh, which is a very permanent uh, contribution for the city, and a plaque is always applied to that bench, too. It's a lot more expensive than a tree, but it, it's always there, and you can sit on it. Thank you, Harry. It's a good reminder. Anything else for Marty? Any other questions or thoughts for trees? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, there's something else in the chat for Harry. Um, he, uh, Trina Brown said, I asked about a bench a while ago, but was informed none was needed for GHB. That's what she said. I personally would love to see more benches at GHP, but. <laughs> and that, that did not come from me. Okay. Well, Trina, talk to Harry. <laughs> yeah, please, please do. Uh, please feel free to contact me. Uh, Janet knows all my contact information. I'll be very happy to talk. But yes, we there are there are several places that we There's, could put brand new benches yeah. in. Uh, I was going to put a bench in in the nectar garden in uh, because the people from Lewis and Bloom have some money to share with that. So we were going to put a bench right in there, which would make a a lovely. That would be lovely. That would yeah. be nice. And then there, we're, we're working on we're working on setting uh, more areas, not necessarily, uh, but but we have good pond views still left. Prime real estate. There, there is quite an opportunity there in the park. Definitely. Um, let's see. Okay, I don't think there's anything else in the chat room. Okay, is there anything else for Marty's suggestions or thoughts before we move on? Yeah, I, Rodney, uh, Marty, um, what about the trees in front of the net house along Canal Front Park? Um, I didn't put that into my proposed budget. I wasn't sure whether it was in yours. So are you including it? The one, the one tree needs to be replaced. And um. I, I, I haven't written that up yet, but I can thank you for the reminder. I will write that in. Might as well put it in my budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I think hey. and Bartlett needs to look at all of those. I think all of those um, willow oaks are stressed. Yes. Um, they yeah. probably need to have structural pruning um, and, um, and some treatment. I, I, I still see uh, scale. 
yeah. On a lot of a lot of the plants there. So um, I wasn't going to get into this because I haven't thoroughly read it yet. But Bartlett gave us a, a whole big a whole big book. Right. The recommendation, this is how thick it is, the recommendation for the ideal uh, management plan for all of our trees. And um, of course, if we did it all, I don't think the city budget could cope with it. But um, yeah, they do recommend um, more work on the trees in Canal Front Park, including um, pest treatment of various sorts. And uh, they would like to do more root pruning. We did, we did root pruning and invigoration of the, um, the maple trees, some of the maple trees, but I think that helped them, but not all of them. And um, yeah, okay. I, will, I, will, I will put that in there, yeah. Okay, we have, thank we you. We have to prioritize the whole, everything that's in the book, but I think that's one of the priorities. Okay. Rodney, you had put a hold on, if I remember correctly, some uh, three tupelo trees, correct? Or a a reservation and at that nursery to hold on to them because they were running out. Right. And um, I think I shared that e email uh, with you, Marty. And um, I asked them to hold on to them for spring planting or a fall hazard. So that's right. when we go in. I talked to Patrick Olson about doing the planting just to get a price to put in my budget. And it's in it's in my proposed budget. Okay. Um, so yeah, replacing right. the three river birch with three tupelos. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else for Marty and the tree program? No. Nope. Okay. We will move on. I'll transition Rodney to you since we discuss the tupelo trees? Sure. Um, you know, we had a, a while this summer, uh, the lawn really suffered because Patrick uh, was not able to get the irrigation system up and running, the new, the new system. He finally did. The grass looked terrible, but he turned it on every day for several weeks and brought it back. Now he's in the, he's in the, what happens when you, when you dig everything up and put new valves and everything in, over time, you get uh, sediment working its way through the system and it clogs things. And he's got to go back and clean them out. And that's what he's been doing, but it's been getting less and less. And I think he's pretty much uh, got that taken care of now. So that's, that was a major effort um, to get that underway because it costs the city every year in repairs. Now we should be done with that. Um, that's good. Yeah, and um, I, we talked about the three trees replacement you know, there's also maintenance things like replacing the uh, planks and the boardwalk. Um, and, uh, and then um, there's, uh, I, talked to, I talked to Warren about removing the overgrown trumpet uh, vines um, on the arbor uh, next to the butterfly garden. Mm -hmm. And I think they're gonna rip the arbor apart if we don't, if we don't take them out. So I, I, I got a price from Patrick to do that and I put that into, into my proposed maintenance uh, budget. And also to remove, there's a, there's a um, um, autumn clematis that grows up mm -hmm. the side of the building, which, you know, the, the designers meant for it to be kept neatly and trimly along the outriggers of that, of that terrace, but that's not the way that vine wants to grow. <laughs> so rather than rather than it's never been kept that well and, and it gets up on the railing and since um lewis and uh, bloom worked with um, the friends group to put those whiskey barrels in and irrigate them um they're going to look so nice that we i think we ought to just remove that uh, autumn clematis entirely um okay. from that corner and i proposed that um and that's part of the vine removal for patrick um then I, you know, I, I don't know whether you want to talk about Warren, but uh, Warren and I also talked about Lewis and Bloom adding um, some uh, perennials that would give more color into the major central bed out there, uh, because we're losing we're losing the the um, some of the grasses and things over time, and we don't want a big mulch garden. And so I think the idea of putting uh, big drifts of colorful perennials is a, is is Warren's idea, and I and I and I think it's a great idea to do that. So, 
there's that. And then also parallel to the parking lot, there's that uh, raised bed area with lots of trees that was originally planted with grasses. The trees, especially the maples, have gotten dense heads on them. There's a lot of shade in now. The grasses are all getting shaded out. Two years ago, I planted a lot of clethra in there, which would take the shade. Um, but I also think that um, we ought to be um, uh, putting some um, shade tolerant ground covers in there that, that, uh, to replace the grasses. And the thought I had was to plant lots of daffodils in there um, so that in the springtime we'd have a major color display um, of daffodils. So I haven't put that in uh, the You don't have to, Rodney. I have 2,000 daffodils to go in there. I was just going <laughs> to ask you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Um, now I'll call you the day that we're going to be planting because we do need hole diggers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just give me at least a week's notice. <laughs> And um, and then there are some other projects that have been kind of put on hold, and, and I put them in, but, um, you know, the, the stone around, the gravel around the main pavilion is just, was never put in properly. And so um, you sink down and it kicks around. It's impossible to get across it if you're in a walker or a wheelchair, and it's hard enough on foot. That really needs to be all taken up and, and put back. I got a price from uh, Patrick to do that also. And, and uh, Lewis and Bloom has, uh, you still have those 10 uh, containers, Warren? Yes. So the thought was maybe putting, uh, I think there are eight columns, uh, mm -hmm. putting them around and, and, and uh, Patrick would run irrigation to them. There's a little problem with that. I, I spoke to, um... Peter Issel about it, and because of the events they have there, he doesn't think that's a good idea because people come off the stage when they have uh, music events, and it, he thought that would interfere. I disagree. I'm gonna have a talk with him about that. We'll okay. Say, let, let, well, let me let me talk to him about that. I wasn't aware of his point of view, um, but uh, we'll we'll talk to that, and then of course. There are long-term projects. Um, one of them is, um, it's come to my attention, we really do need a, um, an accessible way to get from the parking lot to that pavilion. Um, the gravel is just hard and, and uh, I guess John is the dock master mm -hmm. who told me that he, he, he's had complaints about it. So in the future, we need to maybe put in a, um, a permeable but hard path to get from the parking lot to the pavilion. And I think that's worth doing. So I did not put it in. That's a capital improvement. And I just thought things are going to be really tight this year. So I just identified that as a future project. Okay. The other future project is the lighting. You know, the lights, the light poles are starting to go and they're probably, I don't, you know, they're, they're, they're probably inefficient by today's standards. And uh, we should probably replace them with LED, the light poles. But that's a very big project um, and really needs to have a lighting designer do it. Right. Uh, but that would be future also. OK. Um, well, we do have um, on the agenda uh, to talk about capital improvements uh, for 2022. So we can revisit perhaps some of those some of those items okay um i did uh meet with patrick rodney down at the park um last week just to look at that area where um, the lewis little league had to dig up some of the area to get that pipe right I, yeah. um and i was not satisfied with the um work that they did to put the park back together. So I wanted Patrick to come down and take a look at it. And um, he gave an estimate and I sent that to Lewis Little League. So we're going to get that repaired. I'm just waiting to hear back from them. Thank you. Yeah, I saw you copied me on that. That's good. good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, any questions, comments, thoughts for Rodney or where? Okay. Barry, I'm leaving. I'm leaving the tennis courts to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Do you want me uh, to go next, uh, Janet? Sure, go right ahead. Um, 
This morning, uh, we uh, met with uh, Charlie O'Donnell, the engineer that's um, doing the redesign on the tennis courts to talk about the, the lining of the courts. And we discussed it and came up with, uh, I think, a, a good plan for lining the courts and basically what they will be lined um, uh, parallel to the tennis courts so that we'll end up with four courts. And um, that was done for safety reasons and also uh, for controlling uh, the amount of activity that's there. So I, I think that's a good decision. Um, Charlie uh, will complete uh, the rest of the drawings and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do this over the winter and the uh, spring so that when we get into the heavy pickleball and tennis season, uh, we'll have new courts. That, will, that project will also include all new fencing and also resurfacing of the basketball courts. Right. Uh, and Rodney also mentioned a drainage issue that Charlie O'Donnell will um, check out and uh, report back to us whether they can uh, address that issue. So that, that's basically uh, the reconstruction of uh, the tennis courts. Uh, Rodney and I, uh, at one of our previous meetings, uh, uh, volunteered to create uh, a pickleball uh, facility needs study group. And we have invited um, four, uh, three people uh, to that group. Um, I've heard uh, back from uh, Jerry Grohl uh, Dave back, but not Ann Reed yet. Um, so once I get a final confirmation from her, we will uh, set a date for our meeting. Uh, first meeting will probably be in person with masks and then maybe subsequent meetings uh, by Zoom. But we thought uh, for the first meeting, it was important for us all to meet together in, in the same place using masks and social distancing. Um, so that's what our plan is. And we anticipate that we should be able to schedule a meeting sometime uh, the first part of November. Okay. And Great Marsh Park, uh, we, uh, Rodney and I are also working on that. Um, we got a plat, I think, from the state. So I have a little more information as to uh, what is out there, and um, we talked about um, walking uh, the area with Janet, and we thought it would be better to do that um, sometime in November, or at least after the first frost, and then we don't have to worry about major ticks and all that kind of stuff. So um, we will uh, coordinate with Janet to, to kind of do a walkthrough um, because as you may remember, we talked about uh, how important it is to maintain what we have. We can't just let Great Marsh Park just sit there. We need to do an analysis of what's there and how, how we need to manage that, whether it's to look at invasive species or uh, whatever in, in, in the process of creating a master plan for this large uh, piece of uh, property. Okay. That's all I have. Mary, I just had a quick question on whether we, the, the lining of the courts, did you consult with the pickleball at all on, on that piece? Oh, we've got, we, we had tons of okay. input from tennis players and um, as well as pickleball players. And Great. the decisions we made were based on safety Great. and, um, controlling the activity, the, the amount of activity that goes there. And I, I think we made some pretty good decisions. Thanks, Barry. No, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, Jen, before, oh, I don't know if we're still in old business, but I, I just a point of procedure on the, the minutes. I, I heard a, a motion to approve in a second, but I, I don't know that there was actually a vote taken to, to approve the minutes. What, did I miss it or did that? not take place? Um, 
Nope, that was probably Andrew. My oversight. In That's okay. I think uh, just from a pr procedure standpoint, I think a motion and a second, and then I think it actually needs to go to a vote to approve them. Probably. Thank, thank you. So no, no um, worries. If we can do, why don't we take care of that order of business right now? We'll go back and then come back to the rest of the reports. Okay. So. Um, we had a motion to accept the July 27th, 2020 minutes, and there was a second. Is there, or could we have a vote to approve those meeting minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No? Okay, thank you. And moving on to the September 21st, 2020 meeting minutes, we had a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor to approve the meeting minutes? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, just one point I wanted to go back to um, with Barry and Rodney um, talking about the subcommittee, the committee that's being put together to look at the pickleball feasibility. Um, if that's a subcommittee of the commission, that will have to be a public meeting. Right. Okay, so I just wanted to get that on, on the record um, so that we keep that in mind when that meeting is scheduled and we'll get that posted. So we need, uh, how much notice do we need for meeting? A week? Seven days the agenda needs to be posted. So if we could get the date, you know, a little more than that, it makes sure that, you know, sure. we get it all together. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Barry? Okay, so we'll move on. Warren, um, your report for? Okay, um, in both Mary Vessels Park and 1812 Park, uh, the Lewis and Bloom patrons removed all the annuals and put in some fall displays uh, with pumpkins and hay bales and pansies. Uh, we put about 400 pansies and planted in Mary Vessels Park, about 200 in 1812 Park. Uh, also created a couple of small new beds in 1812 Park, one around the uh, monument, the, the historical monument uh, close to the sidewalk. And uh, the other one, uh, uh, what I call a parking meter bed, we just extended the bed out around the sign. We thought that look, would look better. Um, also, the big holly down uh, on the at the bottom of the slope, uh, we trimmed that. So now you can see underneath it. And next spring, uh, we will be planting underneath it. And that's opened up that area that that holly was really blocking the view. And I think it looks much better now. Um, also, as I, um, let me just say this also, but since Lou isn't here, that um, Lou also removed all his annuals in Swanendale Park, and he planted about 500 pansies there. Okay. And, uh, we are all getting ready to, uh, our tulip bulbs are supposed to arrive this week and we hope to be start, starting to plant tulips next week. Uh, Rodney, your daffodil bulbs are here already for uh, Canal Front Park. Yeah. And uh, Lewis and Bloom is paying for them. You park in the city, don't have to worry about that. We are donating them to Thank the you. park. And uh, we have planted the, we have planted parrot tulips and pansies in the barrels on the porch at the net house also to, to let you know. Also, um, we will be planting in the uh, second street planters and some of the planters at city hall at, uh, later at the end of this month when the 
mums go, um, some oak leaf hollies in the planters for the winter. They're very nice. They're oh, three feet tall or so. And uh, there are gonna be 30 of them. And in the spring, we have no place to put them. So we either, Lewis and Bloom is either going to sell them or if anybody can use them in their park, please let me know. We'll donate them to you, but you'll have, they'll, they will need to be watered. So um, plenty of time to get back to me with that. How large are the hollies? Like, huh. They're seven gallon, they're about three feet tall. Okay. Three to four feet. What kind of hollies are they, Warren? Oak leaf. They don't need a male pollinator. They will set berries without a pollinator. Any other questions or comments for Warren? I just I would just like to say that Mary Vessel Park looks great, and so does Main Main Street. I think you guys have done a, a fantastic job, and I, I don't remember the pumpkins and the hay bales and such. Have we done that in the past? But I, I think it looks really, really looks great. We did it once before on a lesser scale. It, it really looks good, and I think it really makes people smile and brightens up their day. And we need a lot of that <laughs> during Thank this. you. We did have a little vandalism one, I think a week ago, Friday night, uh, somebody came through or a group came through and broke about 20 pumpkins in various places. The city was great in cleaning that up. That's, a, that's about the first vandalism that we've ever had in, in town with any of our plantings or anything that we've done. Yeah, that, that was unfortunate. Yeah, it was a surprise. Yeah. Well, it does, it does look wonderful and thank you. You're welcome. Um, we have a question in the chat room uh, from Steve Hansel. Uh, with anticipated shortfalls in the city budget, is there a possibility of the parks engaging in fundraising? I, I don't know that that's something that Oh, the Alfred Park already has a fundraising group. Or right. Well, I think it would have to be the, the friends of the park, right? The friends group. I would think. Right. So. Um, We've done fundraisings for specific projects. For instance, um, when we redid uh, the playground in DHP right. Smith, um, Barry did a lot of Fun. We got some very good response from that. So for specific projects, we have done fundraising for the benches and commemorative trees. There's that's that's a bit of fundraising right there. Okay. So that would be something that could be taken under consideration if need be for specific items or issues or projects. What, could you explain what's the, because uh, uh, we, we've been asked to, per, to provide our proposed budgets early this year. Uh, so what is, what, is the time, what is the total time frame? For so the, the fiscal year will start on um, April 1st. Council will have their budget meetings um, during the month of February and the, the first half of March. Okay. So, um, what we're hoping is that with budget requests coming in, you know, a little earlier than they have in the past, that it gives us an opportunity to make sure that the numbers balance when we, you know, are anticipating it's going to be a little tighter. I, I didn't put any priorities on them. I just listed them. Is, would it be helpful to have a note with, for city council for, with priorities? Um, 
or not? So what, what I would say is if, if you want to put, if you want to prioritize that, that's certainly helpful. But if you don't, we may reach out to you during the, as we're working on the administrative side of the budget um, before it goes to council to, to get a sense of priorities. Right. Yeah, I think that's a great idea I, just because not everyone's attending these and they're not the, the intricacies of what's important to you guys. So I, I think that's would be really important to do that because especially if it's mission critical. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't be just a wish list. It should be things that are, you know, if you have trees that are dead and dying or yeah. things that are um, like the boardwalk, the, the boards on the, on the boardwalk of the waterfront that are rotting, that's a much higher priority than, than, you know, spreading some more mulch and putting some more plants in. Okay, thank you. Just to, to follow up on that, Rodney, we do have GMB doing um, a full assessment of the, the dock area. Um, we actually looked at replacing the boards last year, but there was concern that there's some structural issues that we need to deal with that we, we don't want to make a big investment in the, the boards because that was coming to, you know, $250,000 or something and find out that there's a larger structural problem that we've, you know, so, so hopefully we should have that in place when we have the budget go forward. Okay, good. Uh, okay, I think that covers, um, the parks, um, Lauren is not with us and Lou's not with us tonight. So um, we can move on to an update on the Public Art Commission, Barry. Anything new? Uh, not really. We just, um, we com uh, as you know, we completed the, uh, the, the first uh, the mural in the back of the Public Works building. Uh, at our next meeting, we will address uh, the opportunity to possibly do a mural on the side of the garage public works building that faces um, Washington Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem is it's really kind of right, almost right next to the uh, mural that we just put up. But at our next meeting, which will be I think uh, next week uh, we will address that and we okay. will also talk about what we're going to try to do for the spring. Okay. Good. Um, and was there anything else, Rodney, that you wanted to add for the Friends of Canal Front Park? You're, you're muted, Rodney. The short answer is no. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, okay. So if there's nothing uh, further under the commissioner's report, any other comments, thoughts, questions? Okay. So we will move on to new business and discussion and possible action regarding capital budget requests for fiscal year 2022. Um, Christine, you, you and I had some email communication about your thoughts for Stango. Do you just review that? Uh, yes, and uh, Candace and I haven't gotten a chance to talk about it too much, but okay. uh, last year we had um, proposed uh, replacing the two picnic tables that were taken from the courtyard area to the new library, and so essentially there's no seating in the courtyard, and uh, last year we had, well this year actually we requested um, some type of seating um, in the courtyard area, and since that obviously got nixed for this year. Um, we are exploring options for 2022 and Candace has come up with some ideas as well. I know you've given me some catalogs to look at, which I have, and Candace has, always, has also done some uh, okay. um, shopping. <laughs> 
So uh, Candace, did you want to talk about that? Sure. I went to a couple of websites where I had done some preliminary research for our request last year, but you know, we're not quite in the season right now where you have a plethora of options with regard to uh, outdoor seating. But what we, you know, the concept was, was uh, supported by our fellow commissioners when we proposed it last time. And we hope that it would be supported again. Uh, what we did discuss, uh, Christine and I, was that uh, when we proposed the um, design of these chairs and tables last time, it was a bistro kind of arrangement. Mm -hmm. And those were fairly light and very portable items. <laughs> And a little too portable. A little too portable for our taste. <laughs> and so uh, part of Christine's and my discussion was perhaps having something a bit more substantial that somebody couldn't put under their arm and walk away with. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was researching some of that and I've sent to Christine some uh, teak benches that looked uh, like they would be appropriate for that area uh, in the, the courtyard area. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things we said was perhaps instead of actually choosing furniture as a part of this, discuss the concept of supporting a capital uh, budget item for seating in the courtyard. And then once there are more options available when, this, when it's seasonal, that we then address it and then procure those for that area. So my question would be if, um, when do you anticipate that you'd be able to make a determination on um, availability and pricing, just thinking about the budget process and getting this capital improvement into the budget? Um, with what I saw on websites, um, I put together a, a bogey, if you will, of uh, $4,500 to say that that would be the high point, and it, and it could be substantially less. And of course, until we actually see what items we're looking at that we would propose, but we were talking about having um, a ceiling and then try to work below that right. to okay. procure the furniture. You know, one of the things that's the most expensive part of, of more substantial furniture is the shipping. And right. so it's not merely buying a bench or a chair. It's also looking at what does it take to get that bench or the chair from the vendor to our location? To the location. So we're, we're, we incorporated that into this question of the $4,500 question. So okay. um, based upon the examples that Christine and I have been sharing back and forth, that's the number that we're looking at at the moment. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, are there any questions for Candace and Christine regarding that? Just a suggestion, you might want to look at um, a material called ePay, which is stronger than teak and cedar. Um, we bought um, about four benches for Canary Creek mm -hmm. and um, they're lifespan is about 50 years or something like that or wow wow whatever. okay it's a it's called ePay. I, I, I don't know. it's a tropical hardwood they're very heavy the benches i mean they really are very heavy very so heavy. you're not going to walk off with them definitely that's one of the material choices that we talked about for the um for the the boardwalk the deck yes the, the planking uh, yes yep. mm -hmm. It's used for that too, you know. Has a, a like a fire retardant uh, level of a cinder block. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. They, they had just as an aside, they had them on the boardwalk in Atlantic City for about 40 years and they um, um, started to wear, so they decided to replace them. And the contractor went out and just flipped them. <laughs> they didn't have to replace them. That's how hard the wood is. Wow. So. How, what is, um, is that with, with the durability of that, how, what is the cost comparatively to other products? It's higher. <laughs> it's not that much higher than teak. Yeah. Okay. I, I found it. I, yeah. I mean, if you're building something to, 
to buy some uh, an existing bench is one thing, but if you're doing decking, the the cost of putting the deck on may be more because you know it's harder nails and whatever. Well, but you have to drill holes. You can't drive a nail through it. It's that dense. Right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Just a suggestion. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what other capital improvements do people have in in mind for Rodney? Anything for Canal Front Park? Um, just not for this year. Okay. I didn't have any capital improvements this year. I just assumed that money would be funds would be tight. Okay. For mostly taking care of what we had. The, uh, there was one thing that I had for playgrounds. Um, when we put the playground up um, in Smith Park, there was actually a phase one and phase two, and phase mm -hmm. two included an extension for swings. Um, I, I don't that's really budgeted know. this year, so so that oh, yeah. that we can work yeah. on. Um, okay, good. Early spring. In the okay, spring. Great. Okay. Warren, any any thoughts for your? I have no capital, no, no capital improvements. Okay. I know that um, Lou had put in his budget. He was interested in. Um, another lamp post for the herb garden um, at the park. Um, and I, I know that he had wanted, I think he wanted like potentially two more um, just for a particular section of the herb garden in the park that's um, not well lit and people walk through there. So I will talk to him about that a little bit further and see if that might be something that he wants to do as a, a capital improvement. Um, Marty, is there anything that you have on your list for improvements? No, not, not this year, thanks. Okay. And uh, Harry, did you have anything on your list for potential capital improvements? Not this year. I was waiting. Anne Marie and I had some discussion last year about getting Charlie to do an estimate on a, uh, a fishing base at right. the edge of the pond. Uh, but once Charlie has drawn that up and given us a list of materials and monies, then we'll have an idea of how big a, a capital gains project those will be. And there's room for three of them in the pond in the park. So, okay, it's not this year, obviously. Okay, so that would be okay. We'll put that off. Okay. Any other thoughts or comments on capital improvement? No. Okay, any, any other comments in general? Rodney? Um, I'm, I'm just, uh, it's a question, uh, uh, not a comment. Is there, is there uh, a, a design underway for, I think it's DeVries Monument Park out along, um, along the, up along the canal? Yes. Um, I know the mayor's been working with um, the State Division of Historical and Cultural Affairs and the university on that. Right. I haven't heard anything in a while. Um, I think it, it, it may be stalled at the moment. Um, but there, I'm, sure, I'm sure it is. I know there, there, are, were, students, there were students at the University of Delaware. There were University of Delaware students involved with that. I think there might have been. I attended a workshop. From up in, in Newark from like Oh gosh, I can't remember her name. The the Jules. Yes. 
um, Jules Brook is the yes. is, is the head of the uh, Department of uh, the Landscape Architecture Program. Um, and I just wonder, I know they got stalled because of COVID and everything, but um, I was just curious if there's discussion within Parks and Recreation about that. Does that bec is that a state or is that a city park? Uh, if it's city, do, do, does anybody got to run it past this commission to look at it and comment on it? And Let, let me talk to the mayor. I mean, I think it, it, it's not a city park, but I mean, I, I think it's definitely something that could come before the commission. Just for We're probably going to end up maintaining it, right? Right. Um, I thought it was state ground. I thought the state was going to maintain it. Okay. I thought it was, but I think I, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember that much. I haven't been in any of the meetings. Um, the mayor's been in the meetings directly with the state, um, but it, it's complicated. Sounds okay. like Lewis and Bloom was going to maintain the plantings around the monument after it's completed. But I, we're not going to take care of any of the cutting of the grass. That's the state is doing that now and I think plans to continue doing that. Okay. I think there was money in the bond bill and. It, I mean, it, it's been so long since I've talked about it. So, but I, I can I can talk to the mayor about bringing something, bringing an update maybe at the next meeting. It'd be nice to know at least what's going on with it. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Do it's 7 p.m. Do I have a motion to adjourn? There's so move. Second. Second. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Take care. Thank have you. a good night.